he likes you doing dangerous and unidentified things in dangerous situations like reading torment without torment resistance well zom have i got news for you i am great at making terrible decisions so i think we'll get along real swell buddy looking looking forward to it definitely read some of those though being confused and going downstairs and falling down them well who doesn't am i right now you're just now you're just taking the low-hanging fruit because at the end of the day i could have guessed that anyone falling down the stairs is a good time for everyone involved which again i can't say with a straight face because i was actually just the other day talking to my partner about this where i have a hard time watching videos where people get hurt in any capacity even knowing ahead of time that nobody gets seriously hurt everyone's okay and everyone's happy about it it still makes me slightly uncomfortable and i feel like a big part of that is that i grew up in a generation that was obsessed with surprise sharing terrible things right like anyone who grew up with like limeware and stuff knows the experience of opening a random file that you you cracked through there and horrible horrible things coming up so that's one side of it and then the other side is that i somehow was very fortunate through that entire period of time and wasn't really exposed that much to the worst that uh, the internet and society had to offer and i kind of am happy about that and want to keep it that way is maybe part of my uh hesitation or my lack of desire to experience anything even reminding me of that is potentially what it is but again i i do not pretend to know my own mind it is pure white noise up there constantly so i just kind of keep going about my day and hope that we're on the same team that's about as far as i get there oof fire crab you are a problem. We do actually have a fire resistance ring that I just wasn't wearing. So great job, me. Zom, bad time. Bad time, friend. I mean, again, I appreciate it. You do you. But appreciating something does not mean that I have to be 100% on board and happy with it. Not a fan of slapstick comedy or witnessing cringe. The cringe one I find interesting because cringe... <laughs> I mean, I've always said that cringe is in the eye of the beholder. Um, but no, more seriously, it is such a perspective-based thing that I'm, you know, I'm even reading that comment, I'm curious what cringe means to you versus what it means to me. But I understand the general sentiment I agree with. Slapstick comedy, I think it can be done in a way that I'm all right with, but not my favorite. I mean... We don't debase ourselves down to that low low form of comedy and instead i'm i'm a pun man and that's that's definitely better and not at all uh much much more i mean cringe than than the former that that's just objectively true everyone everyone loves puns not just dads and uh people like me with terrible sense of humors no 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 that is that's the comedy of the people, really. More specifically, embarrassing situations. That I definitely um, empathize and sympathize with because I do terribly. Growing up, I was always the person, like there are lots of movies, especially comedy movies that are very centrally based around the idea of embarrassment equals funny. And I'd be the person that would be covering my face. Like I cannot watch this. It, it physically hurts me. The one movie that managed to break through that was Crazy Stupid Love. For whatever reason, that specific brand of embarrassing humor kind of worked for me and I love that movie. Partially because I was watching it with a friend at the time and I think we were both just having a lot of fun with it. And so it has a lot of, a lot of good memories. Also, I'm guessing, again, I don't have the ears here, but I did just get a Slack notification. So apologies, that's not on your end. That's on me. If you heard that and frantically started going through all your tabs to figure out what it was. But you pause the video, look away or leave the room whenever overwhelming embarrassment happens, especially when it used to be funny. 
Yeah, I'm in the same boat, I'd say. But you found there are people who love the dinner party episode of The Office and those who hate it, and they're both right. <laughs> That's a great way of describing it. In fact, The Office is a, a good example point. Again, I like The Office. I haven't, I never watched it religiously, but here or there growing up, and then I think I've gone back to it a couple times. In general, I really like uh, The American Office. I haven't actually seen very much at all of the UK Office, the original. Maybe I'll rectify that at some point, because I definitely would like to check it out. I don't know much about Ricky Gervais, and I know that they're obviously, or he's a central part of that as the boss, versus I love Michael Scott as portrayed by, uh, I'm completely blanking on his name, but you know who I'm talking about. I, I like him a lot. <laughs> um, and I think that gets by, that skirts by a lot of my fight or flight response to embarrassment, but there are a bunch, like, um, why am I unable to think about anything? Maybe I need the Polybridge music. Not having it in my own ears is uh, throwing me for a loop here. Something tots. That's that's another episode of The Office that I feel is very divisive. Everything I'm thinking about is very wrong. But again, anyone who has seen The American Office knows what I'm talking about. And very much, I would also apply what I'll Catch Fire said to that episode, where there are those who hate it, those that love it, and everyone's kind of correct there. Though, because of my personal bias, I lean towards the ones that hate it. <laughs> because, oof. It, it just hurts me to watch the, the level of embarrassment. But okie dokie, we finished off first little while of, of Lair there, Scott's Tots. Oh my gosh, I just just said Michael Scott over and over and then immediately forgot it. Trying to remember the actor's name, which again is not coming to me. This is why generally I like to think of myself as somebody who's actually fairly decent at trivia. But this is why I can never be on Jeopardy, because even the most basic of like celebrities or political figures, I will blank, especially when put on the spot, which, hey, I'm on, I'm on camera. Hi, mom. Um, of course, is a factor anytime I'm streaming. Oh, man, losing my mind. But yes, I agree. Scott's Tots is the, the cringe litmus test for sure. <laughs> And I have a, a very hard time. I can get through it, covering my eyes for most of it, and occasionally plugging my ears, but I won't be happy about it. Ooh, thank you, Zom. I appreciate the little blast of energy there. Love to see it. So yeah, we'll just head back up to the regular dungeon for now and try to clear out most of this. I feel like I've been trying to let my brain come to its own... Uh, memory here but i think i might need to uh to cheat a bit before i drive myself up the wall specifically do, 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 steve carell jesus oh my oh my all i could think of was dan because he played a character in Dan in Real Life, which is a movie I maybe saw once when I was a teenager and don't really know anything besides I can see the picture or the cover of that movie in my head very well, Dan in Real Life, because I feel like there was one trip where it was a road trip coming from Whitehorse Yukon, where my family is originally from, back to Calgary. And it was me and my dad driving and the only CD we had was the soundtrack to Dan in real life. Ooh. Oh, confusion is really bad here, but if I just get rid of the confusion, then I'm at least fast. So I can walk away here, maybe? Hell yeah. Oof. So um, that was interesting. I mean, honestly, probably not terrible, all in all. There were some half decent effects there, but chaotic to say the least oh it should not attack a hydra or we will remove too many heads also should think about if not even more than think about dragon scales always lovely to see so we'll grab those buckler of protection i should probably put on 
And Cowboy Jim, yeah, you pointed as, out as well. Thank you for reminding me of the, the Fire Dragon scales. I appreciate it. Um, I mean, oh, I can't use bucklers. They're too small. Too small for my, my big frame. I probably don't want to keep going here. This buddy's got to be behind a closed door, right? You wouldn't have one of these Tartarus golems in my D13. Even in a special little, like, castle vault. <laughs> like, be reasonable, Decia says. That's too much, I feel. Uh, most of my boomerangs also got mulched up in the ensuing conflict there. Should also do a quick check. We do have shoals, which is awesome. So that is a great source of throwing consumables in the future. Always love to see that. Melii, definitely a little bit the bane of our existence, but we're able to take care of them for too, too long here. You know what? I think we do transition into some shape-shifting. In fact, I almost should have just started doing that much, much earlier on. And let's see what the timeline on that son of a gun looks like at the end of the day, shall we? Take some slashes and stabs at our bouldery friend there as well. I wouldn't some wood though. Fair enough. And there is a kite shield somewhere. I'll have to take a look. I mainly liked the buckler for the protection brand because that kind of plays off well with what uh, trolls are significantly lacking for the entirety of their adventure. That being any kind of defensive recourse. So that was my main focus there, but, but hey, we'll keep an eye out and make sure we're, you know, on our toes and being dynamic as we move on. Yeah, those golems, that's gotta just be like a placeholder of sorts, right? Doesn't even have a description. I don't know about that. Let's close the door, say nay. And we'll probably just leave that little trove alone for the time being. I don't want to switch into the red dragon scales yet because we currently don't have any good source of uh, cold resistance. So I feel like we will very quickly run into some problems there. Ooh. Thank you, Zom. Good teleport, buddy. I appreciate it. 10 4, good buddy. Love ya. Um, let's make sure we're throwing boomerangs while that son of a gun is over lava so we don't burn up any of our sweet, sweet throwing consumables. At least not at this moment in time. And boomerangs should be able to kill our Tengu friend as well. Not too shabby. Okay, well things have gone a smidge hectic for sure, but we're still in it for the time being. Things are looking pretty good, you know, everything considered. Can't be too upset about that. Minus eight corrosion is pretty rough. We could use a blink here. 17 plus an extra 12 acid damage. I mean, we're not one hit territory quite yet. We just hit you with a large rock. Now we're one hot territory. Now we're one hot territory, baby. No, we're definitely one hit territory, so uh, I will play it safe. We have 34 large rocks. I should probably be using these liberally for the next while. I uh, know, I guess we mulch through them pretty quickly as we very much witnessed with our boomerangs. They tend to uh, to get burned up before you really have too much of an opportunity to realize how how rough it's getting. But we're killing most things in one hit. It's a tough tough calculus to make at the moment here. So let's not worry too much about it. Just believe in ourselves and each other, and we shall get through this with the power of friendship. Fantastic. The true large rocks for the friends we murdered along the way. Um, some more ID scrolls. Probably actually a good idea, especially since they're relatively cheap. So we'll grab all those sons of guns. And let's start churning through 
everything here as well. Enlightenment potions could very much come in handy. I love that. Love it, love it, love it. So we leave a trail of chaotic energy behind me. Also fantastic. And then why do we have another fancy little vault here? I'm not the biggest fan of this layout. I mean, hopefully we can use the astounding powers of the troll to kind of make it work, especially if we're willing to use large rocks up at the drop of a hat, then potentially we're in an okay spot. One of Fargoyles show us golems when sensed. We're just getting some, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting stone from it. I'm getting rock. It's got to be a, a scary golem from Tartarus. It's the only explanation. Turns out it's just a, a baby little gargoyle hanging out. Oh, I can't read scrolls. That is rough. Um, I don't have haste. I do have invisibility though. So let's just start backing it up here just slightly. I'm going to throw a bunch of rocks because I do feel like we might actually have the capability to continue pushing through the pain here. Okay, do have to be careful. There is some lava here. Hopefully, didn't lose too much to that pit before really paying attention to what it was. Oh my gosh, and now we have Trail of Miasma. Miasma. Fortunately, my troll forgot their puffer here today, so they're just constantly complaining about their asthma. That's a, a weird word association or wordplay joke that I cannot get out of my head. It lives completely rent-free in there all the time. Anytime I hear someone talking about my asthma, <laughs> I cannot hear it any other way. Now I've blessed all of you with that fun little uh, curse. Yikes. Well, I guess we'll probably take a potion of... Heal wounds is what I meant to click there. Yikes. I mean, I'm still going to drink the heal wounds and then teleport. No? Teleport? <laughs> I don't really want to use my last heal wounds potion, but I will just in case as much as uh, it's probably a waste. I can also get a good sense now to what I was talking about earlier with the fact that we're down from our 34 large rocks to 17 in basically a blink of an eye here definitely churning through these bad boys at a prodigious rate to say the least but hopefully most of them are just lying on the floor <laughs> little animated armor thank you zom appreciate it again friendship always okay by me and okay back up to 39 rocks we're okay no need to panic folks well, we'll be okay. Be all right. And everything will be good tonight. Fantastic. I mean, killing a molten gargoyle with a single boomerang throw? Pretty awesome. Pretty, can't be upset about that, really. I've actually gained rocks. Started this never 30, and now we're at 41. There were definitely some cyclops hanging out there, so it works out sometimes for sure. No, because you're not the only way that one that thinks that way about miasma. I hate how many weird little, largely word or like vocabulary based, um, I guess factors live in my head rent free. Because the other one that I've talked about previously on stream, not so, not when other people do it. I have no problem when other people do this, but for me myself, when I use the same word too many times in a sentence it like flips a switch in my brain and triggers something. And I start and like, that's cringy to me, even though it's so silly and dumb. And oftentimes it makes my communication less effective because I come up with different ways of saying it when it's like, just say the word Turinsky. Everyone would know what you're talking about. We'd get through this conversation way more confidently and competently if you just weren't such a little freak when it comes to very very certain and seemingly random considerations oh it's actually a thing it's got a name oh really and i thought i was the only one but there are there are literally dozens of us 
Um, Manticore, just take care of you from afar, my friend. I almost hate talking about that on stream and like even having done it in the past because now I feel like it's almost made the condition worse for me when on stream because now I'm worried that people in the audience that have heard me talk about this will then recognize any time that I accidentally multi-use the same word <laughs> and it's just embarrassing just it's no good but no at the end of the day it's totally fine and just uh I like to instead look at it and laugh and treat it as more of a silly thing than a, uh, albeit small debilitation in my ability to, to communicate. Semantic satiation. Ooh, I like that word a lot. Do you know what? I'm okay with it now. I, I walk back a lot of what, lot of what I said because that is, that's sick as hell. I definitely have that. I have analysis paralysis and I have semantic satiation and I'm okay with that. 